The first price, non-negotiable price, is the price of brokenness. Brokenness is a very old teaching that our fathers and the patriarchs taught. Now it's gradually fading. Our advanced and civilized generation is fading that reality away as to the fact that if any man wants power with God, the non-negotiable price is... tell you very quickly. Brokenness is a state of realization and a state of acknowledgement that outside of the help of God, you are limited. It is a state of realization and a state of acknowledgement that outside of the help of God, vain is the help and the strength of man. You want to do mighty things for God? The first price is not getting the name of a ministry or the name of a business. No. The first price, non-negotiable, is the price of brokenness. That you get to a point in your life where by revelation and by an act of your will, you come to a safe conclusion that if God does not help me and hold my hand, I do not sustain the power within myself. The Bible says, says lean not on your own understanding. It says in all your ways, how many? all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path verse 7 says be not wise in your own eyes it's a warning it says fear the lord and turn away from evil why do we need to be broken why does god ensure that i must be broken to be usable i will tell you because of the tendency that is in the heart of man Scripture is already clear that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Scripture is already clear that unassisted, we do not even know what is locked up within our spirits. I want to show you a scripture to buttress on what I'm teaching you tonight. Is God helping someone? Second mm. Kings chapter 8. I found this scripture many years ago. We'll begin our reading from verse 7. There were three people captured in this scripture. The Bible, before I begin to teach on this, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 9 and 10. Very popular scripture. Jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 9 and 10. It says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Have you read that scripture before? The heart of any man, any man who has not been vetted and walked upon by God, no matter how sincere and how well-meaning you look, the verdict of God is that the heart of man is desperately wicked. He said, who can know it? Verse 10 now says, I, the Lord, I search the heart. I try the reins, he says even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings do you know what this means when you come to god and say god use me empower me bless me anoint me don't you think god is carried away by your cry or your kneeling down or your rolling on the floor there is a the, the lord is telling us that there is a weakness in the mortal man so as a preacher, I may not even know the tendencies in my own heart. I may be sincere, but sincerity is not enough. There are tendencies in our hearts that are revealed as we grow. They are revealed as we are exposed. You've heard me say it every time. That there are tendencies in your heart that can be quiet for 30 years. Because the opportunity for its manifestation has not come. So, for not come. So, when you come to God, hear me, He receives you as you are. 
but he does not send you as you are the first price is brokenness are we together back to our text second kings chapter 8 we begin our reading from verse um, seven. Second Kings 8 verse 7 three people were involved in this story number one was the king of Syria called Ben Haddad this was a story about Ben Haddad the second person was Hazael Hazael attended he was like an attendant to the king of Syria and then the third was a prophet called Elisha now follow this story very carefully a revelation of the heart of men this was King Ben Haddad, who was a king over Syria. Are we together now? And then Hazael was an attendant to him, who served him faithfully. But the prophet is about to reveal something about the hearts of men. Follow my reading carefully. And Elisha came to Damascus, and Ben Haddad, the king of Syria, was sick. Are you still here? And it was told him, saying, the man of God is come hither. Next verse. And the king said to Hazael, Take a present in thy hand and go and meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord by him, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? So the king wants to know if his life will end or if he will recover. Are you ready now? So Hazael went to meet him and took a present with him. Of every good thing of Damascus, 40 camels burden. And he came and stood before him and said, Thy son Ben Haddad, king of Syria, had sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? Now watch what the prophet says and then watch his next action. That's my that's where I'm drawing my text from. Elisha said unto him, Go and say unto him, Thou mayest certainly recover. How be it, the Lord has shown me that he shall surely die. He said, listen, I respect him. I can't give him this bad news. Go and tell him that he will recover. But between me and you, God has shown me that that king is going to die. But that's not where I'm going. The next verse is where I'm going. Everybody read the next verse, please. Are you ready? One, two, read. And he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed elisha now and the man of god wept let me ask for you what you are reading so hazael comes to inquire whether king ben haddad will live or die and he says to respect him i can't face him to tell him he will die so tell him he will leave but hazael between me and you as a prophet that man will not recover he will die and the prophet put down his face and began to cry what made the prophet cry next verse verse 12 are you ready one to read again and hazael said why weepeth my lord and he answered because i know the evil that thou will do unto the children of israel their strongholds will you set on fire their young men will you slay with the sword that will dash their children and rip up their women who have children. Hold on. Who was he talking to? An innocent, sincere man, obedient man, sent by the king and he came. And the prophet said, forget what you are seeing now. I've seen the version of you that will be evil. You will tear women who have children in their stomach. You would have looked at Hazael and said, Hazael, you are a good man. For the king to send you and you can come and be obedient. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Next verse 13. And Hazael said, But what is thy servant a dog? He's fighting the prophecy now that he should do this great thing. And Elisha said, The Lord has shown me that you will be king over Syria. Hazael, you look like a sincere man now. And you are even sympathetic. I just described something you will be doing a few years later. And you said, God forbid. God has shown me that when you become a king, 
something that is hiding in your heart now that you do not even know will be revealed is someone following my story go to second kings 13 from verse 22 to 24 for sake of time second kings 13 let's see the manifestation of that prophetic word remember hazael refused and said no 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 this cannot be the bible says but hazael king of syria oppressed israel in the days of jehoahaz the same hazael that years ago the prophet told him that you look like a sincere man now but the way you are going except god steps in in the future you will be a wicked man hazael said no now the bible is saying that hazael oppressed israel the same way the prophet said and the lord was gracious unto them and had compassion on them and had respect unto them because of his covenant with abraham isaac and jacob and would not destroy them neither cast he them from his presence as yet the last verse it says so hazael king of syria died how did god have mercy upon them by killing hazael can you imagine that that he was so wicked god had to kill him so that his people will find rest look up please if i told you today respectfully speaking or if god told you today man of god you are a murderer you will say god forbid me i have never held a knife i am innocent god just give me a church with ten thousand people i am a man of integrity and god says go and fast there is there is guile in your heart you usually will not agree can i tell you this i have learned something as a principle every time you want to know the true report of who you are and how your future will be if god does not help you go to his presence and tell him lord reveal unto me what are the tendencies in my heart there are many people when they were staying in rented apartment they would not miss church they would not miss anything prayer and fasting they are there and you would call them committed brothers even considering making them pastors until they got a job there are people who their lack of being employed can deceive them into thinking they are spiritual themselves it's just that they have a lot of time and nothing else to do so meanwhile while they are waiting for a blessing they seem to be committed but let a job come let marriage come let children come let lifting come can i tell you you know those who love god not just when they are idle when they have what can occupy them and they still keep his place they deserve your respect is someone learning gehazi never knew gehazi never knew that there was that lost in him to the point that he could inherit leprosy he didn't know that you would call gehazi a faithful servant you would call him a potential prophet until he saw gifts in the house of naaman after they gave gifts after they gave all those things and he said no 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 carry your things the man said no we can't leave this thing like that do you know why i'm teaching you what i'm teaching you my dear people many people have started well but failed god on the way because they jumped the class of the spirit the class of brokenness they didn't miss the class of power they didn't miss the class of revelation they didn't miss the class of leadership they didn't miss the class of influence but they missed the class of brokenness and they are carrying over in shame today because they did not allow him to break their hearts as at the time they were seeking god and rolling on the ground they had only a bike and they said lord there is nothing i will not give you and god said let us see the first one million that entered their hands god said give it and i mean give it give it away he demanded that they would give it and they cursed him i rebuke that voice it can't be god whereas in his destiny he was supposed to be a kingdom billionaire it was only a test to see what was in his heart the young boy david 
in that little obedient shepherd boy was an arrogant king was a murderer all in one person but you would never see it at that point there are people today who have failed god in ministry and in business if you saw judas when jesus was selecting the disciples do you know what it meant for judas to qualify to be jesus's treasurer jesus would not give a weak person he was a competent man there is no record that he was careless with keeping the finances he was only a thief but the thief did not show up immediately the thief showed up three years later so you have come for this conference and while you are sitting down and saying lord give me the power to go to the nations god is saying listen if i do not break you and walk on you the day fame comes upon this your life you will become a casualty and a lesson to the body of christ you will become a discouragement to christendom are we together now brokenness apostle no man is perfect i agree but let me tell you this until god breaks you you come as you are but you are never used as you are you come as you are and then you go to the school of the spirit in the school of the spirit it is not anointing that is given to you you begin a journey a journey of pruning a journey of cutting away the flesh let me tell you this this is about the hardest journey in a Christian's life you may not like what I'm telling you but if it is revival and power you want I'm sure some of you seen people under the anointing now all you think it takes to produce this result is that an anointed person lay hand on you and you drop offering on his leg you are joking you are joking again think again uh -uh. You can receive impartation you can't receive a track record him watch this now this man is having an encounter with god and the first thing god does is to touch the strongest part of his body that which makes for his support do you know what that means god's idea of blessing a man is bringing that man to a realization that except I help you, you cannot stand on your own. The Bible says that is how God blesses men in the kingdom. What kind of strange blessing is that? Jacob, you seem to stand without my assistance. I will touch you so that forever you will need a staff as a reminder that if I do not help you, you do not have the ability to stand and have stature and balance. And the Bible calls it a blessing. That when God blesses you in the kingdom, it's not always about giving you things. God blesses you in the kingdom by bringing you to a state where you will never depend on your strength outside of his assistance. It's called brokenness. That when men clap for you and say, man of God, Joshua Selman, look at what God is doing. You remember the tie that has been touched. That is because I am standing on this staff thy rod and thy staff i have mastered the art of depending on the spirit that my result is not just derived from my intelligence it's derived from my perpetual dependence he calls it a blessing please look up believers the character of brokenness is that it leaves that believer in a state where you are perpetually inadequate and that the people who look at you they know every time they see you that these results are not a total expression of your ability that there is an invisible hand behind you that is producing these results those who will host the move of god in this end time those who will command power in ministry those who god will trust with wealth over nations beloved people hear me they are not just men who pray and fast they are not just men who study scripture they are people who will allow the lord to take away that which represents their highest point of strength and he becomes that strength
Do you know what happens to you? You will see results that you cannot fully account for. You will know that there are, there are gaps in this equation. When men clap for you, you say, hold on, hold on, hold on. You will be unfair to give me all the credit. I can tell you this is how far I came. As to who filled this other gap, there is an invisible hand. There are people here who are seated in this place. You may be ordinary, but because you are subscribing to brokenness, God will begin to do things through you that in a few years when we come to Anambra and see the fire of revival and they point the person who is beheading that move, you will not look like it. People will say, I thought I would meet one great man and you will tell them there is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God. Can I be sincere with you? You always know broken vessels because they don't add up to their results. When you look at them, you will know they don't add up to the results. My life is a testimony. When you see the things that God does in and through our lives, beloved people, you can look at us and see the limitations that we have, yet you can see the mighty power of God at work in our lives. It is the reason why when the nations clap for us, we become like ushers and we let them know that we are not ashamed to declare his praises to the nations because I was nothing when he found me. You see, when you are broken, no matter how high you rise, you will still remember. Those who forget are not broken. Many of you here are focusing in the school of power and that is important. All you want is the power of the Holy Spirit to do mighty things. Some of you are focusing in the school of wisdom. You just want revelation and access to depths and mysteries in the kingdom. That is profitable. But in order of priority, when you want to do business with God, your first port of call is death, brokenness. That when they look at you, you would have gotten to a realm called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Look at me. Do you know, if you are not fully broken, the side effect of doing business with God without being broken is the excesses that we now see in our world. From pride to lust, to all of these attributes these are side these are luggages that go with if all you press towards is power and revelation and impartation and you ignore brokenness you will carry with your results luggages that will cancel out everything you have done so you find great people after many years of rising they are they, you are getting blessed from their lives but they are full of pride and full of themselves i tell you what is wrong the diagnosis is they jump that class of brokenness i forgot to tell you that brokenness does not happen only once <laughs> brokenness happens for every season you are entering a new level in the spirit so just because god dealt with you yesterday the realm that you enjoyed yesterday the brokenness that came with this was sufficient but now you are rising higher, there will be a greater level of trust from God. Mm. He brings you to a point in your life where you love him more than ministry, where you love him more than business, where you love him more than signs and wonders, where you desire him more than fame, where you desire him more than any one of these things. Listen, if there is anything you have seen in the life of this man that stands before you, that is worth clapping for, I submit to you by the grace of God, that it is not just because I am the one who prays the most, or fasts the most, or studies scripture the most, but it is the mercy that accompanies brokenness. Your life will be a wonder and a sign first to you and to all around you if you subscribe to brokenness. Brokenness is painful 
brokenness will cost you your ego it will be a season where you listen when you are in a season of brokenness you will live in the silence of god do you know what it means to live in the silence of god where god does not speak as a man of god you can be in that season your life is full of problems yet you are solving that of others and you will not hear a prophetic word for yourself but as soon as someone enters your office that gift is operational you bless him and he goes and say what god what about me and heaven is silent hmm. let's take it down we're going to pray if you came tonight because you desire god to use you then i want you to know that the price god is introducing to us tonight is brokenness i have cried though walking with god let me tell you the truth if anybody tells you walking with god is just full of laughter you are joking it's not the god of the bible you will cry many times there are times you will not understand god when you say explain it to me he will say follow me you will understand five years later trust me enough to follow me there are some of you right now you don't even know the name of what you are doing with god god i want to get a job he says stay here god my colleagues have gone ahead of me he says stay here god what is the name of what you are doing he says stay here have you have you done the seven days fasting yes add 21 days more lord what are we doing am i going to be a man of god just praying what you will become is not as important as who is walking with you just pray and you may not even know what god is doing let me tell you this if you don't understand these seasons your colleagues will come and push you and say you are wasting away you will feel stupid for trusting him please take it low for me there's a song that is boiling in my spirit and i want to sing. hear me you see before i started ministry we're going to pray now i remember when god will hide me in a corner my dear people listen to me we are dealing with matters that make for the move of god i will hide in corners and several men of god will come and meet me and say you are wasting away at this your capacity in ministry you should be a pastor somewhere and i tell them god has not given me any direction he's just asked me to sit down here and to pray i submit to you with every sense of respect and regard many of those people today some of them are not even in ministry again they horrid seasons when you are in that season of brokenness many times you will cry and say god where are we going and they will tell you stay others will move ahead of you and you will look like a fool they will look at you and say look at how you are wasting your life and you will say god what should i do and he will say still stay but can i tell you when that season comes to an end in one day my god i don't know about your god but in one day god will lift you like a trophy that he has made and announce you to the nations and you hear people say i used to know this person god brought me to a point where i had no life of my own again he literally was my everything he still is I stand before you believers and I submit to you that nothing and no one can take his place in my life I love him more than fame I love him more than preaching I would give up ministry a thousand times to maintain my relationship with him I love him more than Greek and Hebrew I love him more than Naira and Kobo I love him more than the fame and the obsession for ministry I will close down the ministry he has given me a thousand times with no apology to maintain my relationship with him this is what he has become for me why has God gathered us tonight to reveal to us that number one his move is coming whether we are ready or not there will be such an outpouring and the move of God's Spirit even across Anambra state those who have gone ahead of you have left prophecies it has not happened but it will happen but number two he's telling you that if you want to become part of his program you can pray and fast 
full of pride and carnal in yourself, you will be surprised that that move will come and edge you out. More than spiritual activities, God is looking for people who are broken. What then is our prayer tonight? I will only give us two prayer points. Prayer point number one. Father, I lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend. Help me find a way. Will you bring me back to you? Lord, I release everything. Just 